CGI isn't a virtual fountain of youth just yet. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst de aging in movies. Do it. These bats are bred for one purpose. For what? For war. That means we're looking at the times that CGI was used to turn back the clock on actors and actresses to less than perfect effect. The technology is getting better, but it still has a long way to go. All right, let's get to the list. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen, X-Men The Last Stand. The first entry on our list is also the first major use of this technology, and while it's far from the worst, it's easy to see that this was an early attempt at the effect. I still don't know why I'm here. Couldn't you just make them say yes? Yes, I could, but it's not my way. Before James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender took over playing the younger versions of the characters, Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen were digitally de-aged for a flashback scene in X-Men The Last Stand. And you're here because I need you. We're not going to have to meet every one of them in person, are we? No. This one's special. Like a lot of later entries, the effect is a little disconcerting, with both actors looking mostly like they've had some wrinkles airbrushed off. Sir Patrick was also de-aged for a cameo in X-Men Origins Wolverine, and the effect was similarly uncomfortable. My name is Charles Xavier. I'm a mutant, like you. I can hear your thoughts. Yes, and I can hear yours. Number 9. Temuera Morrison, Aquaman This big-budget DC spectacle has no shortage of fantastical CGI creations, but there's one effect that's even harder to believe than the giant sea monsters. Uh... I was gonna make you some eggs. Just don't eat my dog, okay? For the film's opening scene, New Zealand actor Temuera Morrison got the de-aging treatment to portray the young father of the hero. The effect doesn't quite land, and Morrison's hair and teeth in particular just don't look natural. I'm Tom, keeper of Lighthouse. We can't speak for Queen Atlanta, but if this strange-looking sight was our first glimpse of a surface dweller, we'd probably hightail it back to the ocean and take our chances with the monsters from the trench. Number 8. Dwayne Johnson, Central Intelligence Okay, we're gonna add a sizable asterisk to this one, given that the film in question is a comedy, and the effect is definitely intended to be weird and off-putting. That being said, the CGI recreation of a younger, out-of-shape version of The Rock's character is just too creepy looking not to mention. The famously buff actor appears with his face CGI'd onto the body of a less than muscular actor and is put through some digital de aging. Watching the character get humiliated in front of his classmates would be bad enough, even without how awkward and uncomfortable the effect makes the entire sequence. And in comparison, Kevin Hart's de aging is pretty believable. And I, for one, will push myself at every stage, at every step. So I got one question to ask. Number 7. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Terminator Genesis The Terminator franchise is all about going back and rewriting the past, something this entry did in spades by returning to an iconic moment from the first film. Nice night for a walk. Wash day tomorrow. Nothing clean, right? <laughs> Nothing clean, right? Hey, I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six-pack. You're close. Give them to me. In the scene, we once again see Arnie's iconic T-800 arrive in 1980s LA and confront some nearby punks. Rather than recycling footage from the original film, a younger Arnie is recreated using CGI. Nice night for a walk. Wash day tomorrow. Nothing clean, right? Nothing clean, right. In a way, this is actually the closest the Terminator has ever truly looked to a creepy robot draped in human skin, with dead, lifeless eyes and subtly off facial movements. But we doubt that's what the filmmakers were really going for. Also, hey, wasn't one of those punks originally Bill Paxton? Number 6. Orlando Bloom, The Hobbit Trilogy In the mythology of J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth, elves are ageless, divine beings possessed of an ethereal and otherworldly beauty. I cannot go back. Where will you go? I do not know. 
Under normal circumstances, this isn't that hard to pull off on screen, but Orlando Bloom's return to the franchise presented a problem given that the actor had visibly aged. To return his visage to an elven youthfulness, CGI was used for his scenes in the film, giving his face a strange sheen and glow that, while definitely otherworldly, probably wasn't what Tolkien had in mind. Do not think I won't kill you, dwarf. It would be my pleasure. Legolas also does enough gravity-defying acrobatics over the course of the movie that his whole character just feels like one big unfinished effect. <laughs> Number 5. The Losers Club – It, Chapter 2 The first installment of the epic two-part adaptation of Stephen King's legendary novel proved once and for all that the stigma around child actors is about as dead as poor Georgie Denbro. Yeah, and I think the rabbi's gonna pull down your pants. Turn to the crowd and say, where's the view? <laughs> but there's still one problem with child actors that the sequel could not solve. They age. While the second film put the focus largely on the adult versions of the Losers Club during their rematch with Pennywise, some flashback scenes were added that required the original actors to return. What the dick is this? How'd you build it? When did you build it? This proved problematic, as a few of them had noticeably grown since filming the first movie. And the CGI used to return them to a younger appearance scared some viewers almost as much as it itself. What happens when you put your hand on the other pillar, Professor? Okay, you see, this is exactly why there are safety codes, why we have permits. This place is a death trap, you understand that? Number 4. Clark Gregg, Captain Marvel one of our favorite surprises in this MCU epic was the return of Clark Gregg's Agent Phil Coulson, a stalwart S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who helped tie together the first phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Coulson, you have eyes on him? They're not down here. Except while Samuel L. Jackson got an absolutely incredible digital makeover for his starring role, Gregg's de-aging clearly took the backseat. So is it true that the Kree burned your eye out because you refused to give them the Tesseract? Coulson's transformation just doesn't hold a candle to Furies, with a strange-looking hairline and rubbery facial movements made all the more noticeable in comparison to his boss. I'm sorry to report that we still haven't found the Tesseract. I'm sure it'll turn up somewhere. I'll let you know when it does. Then what? Sir? We have no idea what other intergalactic threats are out there. And our one-woman security force had a prior commitment on the other side of the universe. Our fan theory is that this younger Coulson is a Skrull who isn't as good at shapeshifting as some of his friends. Keep practicing, buddy. Number 3. Sylvester Stallone – Grudge Match Digitally de-aging a movie star is a hard thing to pull off at the best of times, and scenes that require a lot of movement make the effect way harder to accomplish convincingly. 1982, Pittsburgh. Razor and Kid, both undefeated top-ranked contenders, divide the city in a spectacular war. You know what typically involves a whole lot of movement? A boxing match. For a flashback scene in this 2013 film, a CGI recreation of a young Sly Stallone faces off against a similarly de-aged Robert De Niro. What a turn of events! Unbelievable! The rematch drew the biggest television audience since the thriller in Manila nine years earlier. But this time the story was different. Razor soundly defeated Kid in a lopsided victory that was over in four rounds. The effect looks like, well, exactly that, an effect an unconvincing CGI mask of Stallone's face haphazardly slapped on a younger man's body. De Niro also looks off, but Sly definitely got the short end of the stick here. Today I'm announcing my retirement from professional boxing. Number 2. Johnny Depp, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise has brought some truly terrifying CGI monsters to life, and the legions of deep-sea monsters and undead pirates are kind of scary too. <laughs> We can probably all agree that the Pirates movies got kind of rocky as time went on, and Johnny Depp's creepy CGI face in the fifth installment was probably the final nail in the coffin for many viewers. It's like the total package for bad de-aging. Creepy, unnatural skin, lifeless eyes, and an overall sense that you're watching something artificial and unnatural. Thankfully, the scene doesn't last long, but the lingering shots of the de-aged Depp still haunt our dreams. Right then, you surrender to me now, and I'll let you live! I shall let you live! <laughs> Number 1. Jeff Bridges, Tron Legacy Way back in 2010, digital de-aging had been used minimally for cameos and flashbacks. And then, one day, something happened. Something extraordinary. But for the sequel to cult favorite sci-fi flick Tron, 
The technology was used far more to create a major recurring character, a de-aged version of the dude himself. The film takes place entirely within a digital landscape, and almost every character outside of Hero Sam is technically a digital being. Who are you? But that doesn't help the fact that this early attempt at putting the effect front and center just does not work. Giving the film's villain an unnatural appearance so deep in the uncanny valley, he can probably see bedrock. Let's move. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.